In this tutorial, I'll show you how to find the tension of a cord for an object spinning in a circle. The question reads, a 2 kilogram ball is whirled in a vertical circle via a cord of radius 1 meter at a constant velocity of 6.28 meters per second. We have to calculate three things. The first thing being the tension in the cord at the top of the motion, the tension at the bottom, and finally the minimum velocity to keep the mass from falling out at the top of the circle. The first thing that I want to do to tackle this problem is to draw what is happening. So let's pretend that we have an object that is moving in a circle and someone is whirling it where the center of the circle is right here. If this is the string, let me show that with a dashed line. If that's the string and this is the person's hand right here, there are two forces acting on this object. Let's show that object to be this orange circle. The first force is the tension due to the cord. And the second force, and I'll write that down via a vector, a blue vector, and the second force is the force of gravity, also pulling down on the ball. Now I do realize that I drew the vectors the same length, that doesn't mean they're the same magnitude. And the reason why I drew the tension downwards as opposed to upwards is because we're considering this problem from the reference frame of the ball, not from the point of view of the person that is doing the spinning. This suggests that when the ball is down here, the tension will still be upwards, but the force of gravity, of course, will be going downwards. So to answer question A, we will add these two forces up. So we'll call the magnitude of the tension T. We'll add T and the force due to gravity Remember, the force due to gravity can be represented using Newton's second law, where force is equal to m times g, and g simply represents the acceleration due to gravity of 9.8. So we'll be adding t plus mg and making that equal to the centripetal force. The centripetal force is represented as f is equal to ma, again, Newton's second law, where if something is going in a circle like this and centripetal force is happening, A is replaced with V to the power of 2 over R. That's the radial acceleration or the centripetal acceleration. So replacing A with V squared over R, we get M times V squared over R. And we'll take this expression and put it right here. And just so that you're not confused, let me stylize this as a V and that's your R. Okay, so we need to find out what the tension is. I will take this term over to the right side where I have T is equal to MV squared over R minus MG. G can be replaced with 9.8 if you like at this point. R can be replaced with what it was, one meter. The velocity can be replaced with 6.28 and the mass is given. So this is actually an easy problem. 2 times 6.28 raised to the power of 2 over 1. Actually, I'll remove the denominator here that is 1 because anything divided by 1 is the number. Minus 2, again, the mass is 2, times 9.8. So let's substitute that into our calculator. We should get the tension in newtons. So 2 times 6.28 raised to the power of 2 minus 2 bracket 9.8. And that gives us 59.27. So you can round this to two numbers after the decimal place to take into account the correct number of significant figures. And if we do that, you should write down 59.28. 59.28 newtons. For question B, the tension in the cord at the bottom of the motion. Remember this time the tension is going upwards and it's actually going in the opposite direction of the force of gravity. So how do we deal with that? Instead of adding the two forces, we will subtract them. So I have T minus MG is equal again to MV to the power of two over R. Doing the exact same calculation, except that when you move this thing over, it becomes positive. So we have T is equal to MV squared over R plus MG. And like I said, 
doing it all over again. All I have to do is replace this with plus, and now we get a tension of 98.47, or 98.48, 98.48 newtons. Lastly, for part C, we need to find the minimum velocity to prevent the mass from falling out of the circle. The only way this could happen is if at the top, the force due to gravity was bigger than the centripetal force. So if the force due to gravity is greater than the centripetal force, which I'll represent as FC, then it would fall out of the loop. So with that being said, let's set the two forces equal to one another, where I have mg, the force due to gravity, and the centripetal force equal to each other and solve for v. So I have mv raised to the power of 2 over r, and we learned why it's mv raised to the power of 2 over r when we discussed it here. And by solving for v, we'll find the point when these two are equal, and by finding that, we will know exactly the smallest velocity that is required for this thing to remain in this loop. Now notice that these m's are going to cancel out because we have one on each side. I have 9.8 is equal to v to the power of 2 over r, which was 1 meter. We get now 9.8 is equal to v to the power of 2. And square rooting both sides, we get a value for v being, let's find out what that is, 9.8 square rooted is 3.13. 3.13 meters per second is the minimum velocity for this thing to remain in this loop without falling out of this circle.